The project was uh, part of a, a more comprehensive uh, work that we did with Dr. Abdul and during my research fellowship. And basically, the aim was to uh, try to demonstrate that uh, observational studies uh, have still uh, a role in determining the comparative effectiveness research, especially against radiotherapy and prostatectomy. Um, so we know that in the last few years, there have been many criticism against observational study, especially based on uh, population database, such as SEER database or NCDB, uh, due to a uh, well-known selection bias that usually affect patients uh, referred to radiotherapy. Because we know that in clinical practice, uh, patients referred to radiotherapy are usually more older, more sicker, so have more uh, uh, an overall poor overall health status, uh, and these inevitably impact the the cause of mortality, uh, regardless if it's for prostate cancer or any other cause of mortality. Um, this is true for radiotherapy and radical prostatectomy, of course, and we know that. Uh, especially for the setting of clinical node positive and in general for high risk disease, we do not have a, a proper randomized control trial that assess which is the best treatment for these patients. Uh, we have a randomized trial which is ongoing, leading by a Swedish group, but the, the evidence to date are very, very um, scarce, especially because we know that in clinical practice, Patients who are referred to radiotherapy usually receive a suboptimal treatment and the adherence to the optimal treatment, which should be radiotherapy plus combined androgen deprivation therapy, uh, especially maybe not academy center or not tertiary referral center is poor. And these inevitably impact the, the outcomes of these patients. And this was clear also when we look at the data from the PROTECT trial, where we see that basically there is no difference between radiotherapy and radical prostatectomy. Uh, but we also know that that trial was mainly focused on low and intermediate risk disease. So we tried to uh, assess uh, if using the same population-based database that was previously used and that clearly show an advantage uh, on uh, radical prostatectomy over radiotherapy, uh, maybe trying to overcome this selection bias, trying to pro propensity score match these patients based on the other cause mortality was effective in order to try to overcome this bias uh, to proper assess the, the outcomes of the pa these patients. So uh, the, the project was basically divided in two parts. Uh, so we abstract data from SEER patients uh, with prostate cancer from 2004 to 2009. And then we match these patients based on their other cause mortality in order to create a court that has the same overall health status and mm, as a proxy of the evaluation of comorbidities. Uh, by doing so, we then stratify the population based on their risk uh, disease, uh, and we were, were, were able for the first time to align with the result of the PROTED trial. So we did not see any difference in prostate cancer specific mortality for what concern low risk disease and favorable intermediate risk disease. So patients with glisone 3 plus 4 while for patients with unfavorable intermediate, so 4 plus 3, and for uh, patients with high-risk disease, we found an advantage of radiotherapy, of radical prostatectomy over radiotherapy. Uh, the same situation is valid also for clinical node positive patients, where we do not have a proper randomized control trial that have assessed the best strategy. And in the second part of the project, which was led by my uh, research fellow mate, Dr. Shane Teasley, uh, again, after propensity score match based this patient, based on the other cause mortality, we were able to show that radical prostatectomy still seems the best treatment for a patient with a, a disease that is not confined to the prostate, but as also uh, impact uh, lymph node uh, of the prostate. Uh, of course, we have some, some limitation uh, due to this study. Uh, we know that uh, SEER database is not a perfect data set, 
But after, uh, if you know how to use this data set and if you know how to overcome this selection, I think that you can still uh, find good some good evidence for the treatment of our patients. Uh, so this was the the main the main uh, aim of our study. Then we also uh, explore other situations, especially metastatic prostate cancer. These are studies still ongoing. And the last part of uh, this project was also to uh, assess the rate of adherence to the optimal treatment for clinical node positive pro prostate cancer patients. Who we know that uh, some, we, they usually do not receive the, the optimal treatment and this probably is the, one of the reasons why uh, radiotherapist still seems inferior from the oncological point of view to radical prostatectomy. Yeah, we we also so the problem of our methodology is that by propensity score match these patients based on their calculated other cause mortality risk, you need uh, a good sample size. Uh, for instance, when we uh, use the SEER database, we started from a popular a court of nineteen thousand patients, and in the end, this court after the propensity score match was reduced to nine thousand patients. So of course especially when you look at a single center court, it's not so easy to try to apply this methodology. Uh, we did uh, some uh, preliminary studies on our institutional database at Harry Ford Health System. And basically we were able to uh, demonstrate that this difference between radical prostatectomy radiotherapy in the high risk setting was uh, mitigate when compared with the SEER data. So uh, yes, we can say that in a more controlled uh, clinical scenario, uh, this difference in oncological outcomes was clearly reduced and to the point that uh, radiotherapy was still inferior to radio to radical prostatectomy for high risk, but not for clinical node positive patients. But of course, the the court was uh, almost one thousand patients, so there is also a problem of adequate sample size to to do this to apply this methodology. The, the second step, as I mentioned, was to try to uh, apply this to our uh, institutional court, and we, all, we already did that. And we are also trying to work with other institutions uh, to try to create a multicentric studies uh, with all the data of our patients, especially because our database is still uh, ongoing. We are still uh, updating data and we will probably be able in uh, probably a couple of years, even less, to have uh, complete data regarding the type of radiotherapy that patients underwent, the dose, uh, the type of androgen deprivation therapy that was combined to the radiotherapy, uh, presence of biochemical recurrence, which is another limitation, because in SEER we have just the cancer-specific mortality and we do not have the intermediate uh, outcome, so biochemical recurrence and uh, distant metastasis and um, local advanced uh, recurrence. Um, so this is probably the, this is the the this will be the next uh, step. So try to apply and validate these uh, findings in a multicentric court of uh, four centers from Italy. So our institution here in Italy, we were three research fellows, and also combined to the group of uh, Detroit and another group probably from uh, Sweden. The main point uh, will be to, we'll try to see um, if the, the outcomes of, for the higher risk patients will change based on a different court. Uh, I'm assuming that probably we will, see, we will still see a difference, an advantage of uh, prostatectomy uh, over radiotherapy, but I think that probably the difference in cancer-specific mortality that we uh, so in the SEER data set will be um, extremely reduced, uh, maybe not equally comparable to treatment, but I think that oh, 
probably the difference in outcomes uh, between the two treatments will be reduced. And also another point is that um, when we look at the high risk disease, we also know that uh, we uh, probably we need a, a shorter follow up than uh, for intermediate low risk disease. We know that low risk disease uh, has a very good prognosis. So to uh, have a proper um, evaluation of the cancer specific mortality, you, you need uh, at least a median follow up of 10 years. For high risk disease, probably uh, intermediate uh, outcomes at three or five years will be enough to see if there is a clear difference or if the, the two treatment will be uh, comparable.